Will you be going to the World Meeting of Families? Well, the World Meeting of Families, well, look, uh, the Pope is coming to the World Meeting of Families, so let me sort of uh, take out the Pope. The Pope's visit's a very important thing for Ireland, and, you know, he's so beloved uh, by the people, and I think it's wonderful that he's coming, and is coming to a place that he knows, because he spent time right next door in Milltown. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like the Pope to be happy and comfortable and have a good, have a, have a really feel Irish hospitality and feel in Ireland also, get an insight into what we mean by family. Um, I'm not sure that he'll get it at the World Meeting of Families, but, <laughs> um, but I'd like to think that he might get it in some way. The World Meeting of Families as a phenomenon it's been ongoing for quite a number of years. And to be honest, if I'd wanted to go to it in any other part of the world where it's been, I could have, but I never have done. And the reason is very simple. It has a, had about it from its beginning a kind of quasi-political rally um, atmosphere that wor has always worried me. I have read every single document that has come out of or been involved with every single world meeting of families and they those documents have worried me because they have become almost distilled around a number of recurring issues um, opposition to um, lgbti people opposition to same-sex marriage opposition to same-sex adoptions opposition or adoption by same-sex couples i should say um, uh, to um, uh, pushing the orthodoxy of humanae vitae, uh, obviously also very strongly pro-life. Um, so it's around these, this narrow band of what I might call political issues that the strength of the world meeting of families has been. Um, and so do, do you think LGBT people will be welcome there? Well, in 2015 at the world meeting of families that took place in Philadelphia, there was, I think, um, um, an attempt to suggest from the very beginning that this was going to be a very inclusive meeting, that LGBTI people were welcome. And on the strength of that, an organization that represents many LGBTI Catholics, Dignity.org, they went to that meeting. Uh, their experience wasn't all that happy. They didn't feel that they were treated with great respect or hospitality, but one particular episode that that did happen there really bothered me greatly. And that was uh, what happened to Marianne Duddy Burke yeah. and her partner, uh, whom she married, I think, in the early part of the 20, let's say 20, 2004, 2006. Mm -hmm. They got married and they have two adopted children, she and her partner. And the children were taking part in the children's part of the mm -hmm. World Meeting of Families. And coming out of it, when she and her partner went to collect the children, who were, I think, 12 and 10, a lady, a complete stranger, said to them, um, are you a same-sex couple? And Marianne said, yes, we are. As a matter of fact, we've been married you know, for quite a number of years. These are our children. And the lady said, no, they are not your children. And a crowd gathered and started to chant at them in front of the children, not your children, not your children. And so they left very upset and traumatized now, I knew of that, and the one thing I really didn't want was for anything like that to happen here. I felt Ireland could do this differently. Mm -hmm. Dublin is the host. Um, uh, Dermot Martin, uh, our Archbishop, I knew would not want anything like that to happen in Ireland. And uh, at the very beginning, there was a wonderful, um, a wonderful kind of vision for the World Meeting of Families set out by uh, Bishop Brendan Leahy. You know, it was going to be inclusive of everybody. And there was and, even a photograph of... Uh, and in fairness to those, lo the local people who organised the original catechesis, I mm -hmm. think that's what they wanted for Ireland. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they weren't in charge of it overall. And the people who were in charge of it became very strongly influenced by, pressured by, um, e strongly evangelical, um, I beg your pardon, sorry, not evangelical, fundamentalist groups mm -hmm. from Ireland and from the United States. Mm -hmm. And the tide changed, and as we know, the catechesis, the documents were changed. Photographs um, were removed. Photographs were yeah. removed, and there was really a, quite a scandalous um, um, demeaning or attempt to demean the LGBTI community and what they can bring to family life. Now, um, in more recent times, of course, 
Um, they have attempted to redress that in some way. Um, I understand that Father James Martin, um, who has written very well on the subject of the language used by the church in relation to homosexuality, in relation to LGBTI people generally, he has written that this, the language of the church is dangerous, it's unhelpful. He has written um, against conversion therapy, and he has now, almost at the last minute, if you like, he has been inserted into the program. And I think that's very welcome because it, it in a way, it counters the one, the other person who is invited. And that other person is? Is unfortunately Rocco Buttiglione. Who and is he? And Rocco Buttiglione, um, we'll talk about um, John Paul II's theology of the body, which is often used to justify conversion therapy. He is a man, he's a former, a former minister, I think, in Berlusconi's government, certainly in an, in an, in a, in an Italian government. You, some of you might remember his name from an episode that happened way back, oh, I don't know, maybe 14 years ago, certainly 14 years ago, um, when he was nominated as a European commissioner with a brief to... Um, uh, for human rights and um, his views on women, uh, which are really very reactionary, but his views on homosexuality, which are unacceptable. Um, he describes homosexuality, homosexuality as immoral. Um, he is the person who has been asked to um, to teach at the. Um, uh, and uh, the he's, workshop. He's speaking on, just before James Martin. Well, he's the person who, that's always been in the program, right. um, that particular um, mm -hmm. part uh, on the John Paul II theology of the body, though we didn't know until recently who was going to be giving that um, uh, particular workshop. Then uh, we knew who was going to be giving it, and then suddenly what we're told is that James Martin is now going to be invited. And I think that's good, because actually what it shows is a church that possibly is in some kind of transition on this issue, that it has to, um, you know, obviously, you see, the world meeting, you've asked me about, not attend, about a, the world meeting of families. These are rallies about orthodoxy teaching, they're not, they're not discussion forums. Um, th so they're about rallying um, around the orthodoxy of the magisterium, which is probably why I've never been attracted to go to them in the past. But you'll miss out on the plenary indulgence. <laughs> yeah. To, to be honest, I'm not really hanging around waiting for a plenary indulgence. <laughs> um, I also find all of that deeply embarrassing. Why? Um, why? Just, you try explaining to anybody what a plenary indulgence is. What is a plenary indulgence? I don't, don't ask me. <laughs> Please. Um, it's a, it's, it's just a fast too, ticket it's to heaven. It's just all it? too embarrassing. I mean, yeah. is, this, is this not where Martin Luther came in? Yeah. You know, do so we what, learn nothing? But Mary, this goes back to the curia. They seem to be on autopilot. They seem to be issuing these things well, without you know, thinking. I mean, when I heard about the plenary indulgence, honestly, I could have cried. And um, I know there are people, I don't want to insult anybody, I mean, there are people who probably, you know, really deeply believe in this stuff mm -hmm. and, uh, and, um, and, you know, who will, f with, with great fidelity, act out all the, and, you know, tick all the boxes that you need to tick to qualify for the full plenary indulgence or the partial one that you can get as well. And, and I, I don't want to insult them. It means a lot to them. Um, to me, it's just downright, just downright uh, embarrassing. Um, and, and yet, the content, I mean, attending the masses, saying the prayers, these are all good things in their own nature, and they don't deserve, I think they don't deserve to be treated in this medieval way. Um, that you know that you can knock days off your time in purgatory. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry. I just, I just find that I find it tedious that we're even discussing it. To be honest, could I, could I get a quick plug in for We Are Church? We're running a petition at the moment. If you go to the website um, change.org, we're running a petition asking Pope Francis to change church language about LGBTI people. And we'd be so grateful if you uh, agree with the petition, if you would sign it. And we actually have our computer set up outside for anybody who wants to do it on the way out. So we'd be very grateful if perhaps you would consider oh, that's, it. That's how you deal with the curia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that's one of the good ways of dealing with them. Mary, one other thing that's happening later this month is the Dublin Pride Parade. And the theme of that this year is, coincidentally, we are family. Yes. Will you be going? Absolutely. I will be there with my... Um, yes. Yeah. I'll be there with um, my gay son and his wonderful husband. And I'll be there with his twin, his straight twin. I'll be there with um, his um, heterosexual other sister and her husband and their two children. And Martin, uh, my husband, uh, the great gift that I got from Father Justin all those years ago. Um, I'll be, and uh, my brothers, a number of my brothers and sisters will be joining us. Um, um, none of them have uh, gay children. They are um, they're just a bunch of heterosexuals. Um, <laughs> but uh, we are family. <laughs> we are family. And that's what we will be showcasing. And I think, I hope we'll be showcasing Ireland at its absolute best. It'll be my first uh, gay pride march. And if, if my mother, if we can get a wheelchair, my mother might come. Great. Yeah. <laughs> She's not too sure that her legs will be up to the mark, to the walk from Stephen's Green to Smithfield Square. Um, I don't, you know, she, that would be a bit too far for her, but we might, we might push her. That, it, it could make for a very powerful image. Do you think the Vatican, the Curia, will they get the message? Only if they see the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. I do believe, you know, I, I, al I think the truth always finds a space to worry, no matter, no matter how many efforts are made to close down the space, no matter how many, you know, how many words um, they pour on it, like ready-mixed concrete to try and close off all the gaps. I think the truth always finds a space and it worries that space until it bubbles to the surface. And that's exactly what happened in Ireland over the 40 years of, of um, campaigning for LGBTI rights. Um, I think that's what happened.